So are we doing um, uh, Keaton and um, uh, Nicholson, or did you have a different idea? I don't have any different ideas. Okay. No, I'm hope we're doing uh, Keaton and Jack Nicholson because uh, that's the research that I just did in All the right, last well. half hour. <laughs> so okay. So it, right. it'd be surprise if we had to do somebody else. I'd have to fly by the seat of my pants. So. All right. Fair enough. I so. just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. No, those are good picks. I, these are these are good icons, definitely. All right, very cool. So, uh, about uh, when we stop, one, which one are we doing first? First of all, uh, I was going to go Keaton first. Okay, we'll do Keaton, and then I'm have to take a like a, a thirty second break and go get my power cord because I think my battery's going to die by that time. Okay. So we'll we'll make it through though. I think we'll make it through the first half hour. Okay. All right, fair enough. All right. Um, you know what we're doing, Matt? Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Let me just make sure that's recording again. I just like to safe than sorry. Hey, I'm recording too, so. Oh, it's always better, since, better safe than sorry on both ends. So 172. Files growing. Perfect. Outstanding. Okay, cool. Uh, right. Let me get to the right screen. Uh, my dog doesn't need to come in yet, so we're good. All right. My dog. My dogs are outside right now. I didn't even know they're outside. Hold on. <laughs> uh, there's always too much going on, man. Oh, my greyhounds are playing crazy and digging up my freaking yard. I'm going to have to block off half of my yard so that they stop tearing up my yard. Sorry for the delay. Anyway, okay, let's go. Michael <laughs> Keaton. <Woo-woo. laughs> Who are you? What are we really talking about here? Huh? What's the essence of what we're talking about? I'll spell it out for you if I have to. Prostitution. Hmm? What is it? What is it? Oh. Prostitution. Hey, we can say it. We're big kids now, right? You know, a lot of times it'll help you to understand a word if you break it down. So let's do that now, shall we? Pros doesn't mean anything. Forget about that. Tit. I think we all know what that means. Two. Okay, two. Tit. And shun, of course, from the um, Latin to. Shun, to say no, uh uh-uh, thank you anyway, I don't want it, to push away, doesn't even belong in this word, really, so let's get rid of that. You know, um, if I can take a moment here, uh, and I mean this, what I'm about to say, I feel a lot of love in this room. I don't know, maybe it's me, but I'll tell you something, I was here a minute ago, and uh, it was really beautiful. For the Romans, give me sight beyond sight. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Get ready. Prepare for blast off. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough roads to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going. We don't need roads. Remember, no matter where you go, This is 80s Reboot Overdrive Podcast. Is like so dated. Uh, so this is 80s Reboot Overdrive. I am Dave online. I have got Matt. Say hi, Matt. Who are you people? Why are you holding me hostage? 
And we also got Mr. Scott. Scott. Hello, everybody. It's great to be back. I love doing this show with Dave and Matt. It's been a long time, Matt. How you been, man? I've been good. You know, yeah, I mean, we haven't had done a sabbatical. Show yeah, we well, haven't done a show together in a long time. I know. You know, Matt, what we need is Halt and Catch Fire to come back. It, well, it is. It's coming back. Uh, I think in the end of June, July sometime. All right. Well, not fast enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I am so Barely far any. Away. There's like no promotion on it either. Yeah, I know. That's just really weird. So, and, and that's our autoexec.bat um, podcast. So that would be something to get going again once that show starts. And this will be season three, right? Yep. Yep. Season three. Yeah. And which was questionable. They weren't sure if it was going to happen, right? Right, exactly. No. So it was yeah. kind of the uh, the fans rallied to make sure the uh, um, you know, AMC knew let's not get rid of this show. And, you know, a lot of love was being sent out, you know, in the Twitterverse and blogs and all that kind of good stuff. And so um, I, I think they raised uh, enough noise to say, all right, we need to give this show another season. So, cool. yeah, I'm just hoping that they do – you know, higher ratings for season three, so we don't have to go through the drama to get a season four. <laughs> Somehow, I think it's going to be in the same boat again. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the smart shows—that's what happens with the smart shows. Yeah. So anyway. Was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Uh, oh. Just to inter. Just I got to interject just for a second there. Okay. So Chrissy was reading to me an article or something the other day that said that F- Fuller House. You know what Fuller House is? Yeah, that's the uh, the modern version of Full House. Yes, that it has more watchers than The Walking Dead. So I, it's very disappointing that that Halt and Catch Fire doesn't have more watchers than something like that because I can't imagine watching Fuller House ever. I watched the first episode. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. This is this is this well, is that's terrible. The, that's the um, that's the thing. They don't actually track the numbers post after it's released so you don't really know the real numbers right because could is be that old. it's the all well that's a netflix original too i think isn't it uh fuller house yeah and that, yeah and netflix yeah oh yeah that's that i guess that's even harder to track yeah you can imagine anyway netflix sorry could let's move on late their numbers anyway <laughs> yeah not to get on this whole tangent of fuller house but my teenage daughter loves that show Really, my wife is totally and and in, in just into it, and I can't watch it. She watch it. You know what? She she watches it when I'm doing the podcast. Actually. Oh, okay. okay. Fair enough. <laughs> so it works out. It's all good. It works out. Yeah. All right. So we're going to jump into another '80s icon series, and what we're going to be doing is picking on Mr. Michael Keaton. So uh, I couldn't go too far along into our icon series without being able to go and, you know, have some reference back to Mr. Bruce Wayne, Batman. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to read the filmography first. So he was in a TV series in 1982 called Report to Murphy. 1982, he did the movie Night Shift. 1983, Mr. Mom. 1984, Johnny Dangerously. 1986, Gung Ho. 1986, again, Touch and Go. 1987, The Squeeze. 1988, little movie that most of us may have heard of is Beetlejuice. Uh, 1988, Clean and Sober. 1989, The Dream Team. And then 1989, Batman. So, um... Definitely some really great iconic movies in there. And, uh, you know, I think Michael Keaton being in the center of it really helped solidify those movies and made them what they were. Um, so I'm interested to hear your guys' favorite 80s moment with Michael Keaton. We can start with Matt. Uh, well, without a doubt, my favorite Michael Keaton movie is Beetlejuice. I mean, that pretty much cemented his star power and. And just his creative side just oozed out of that role. So what was your favorite part of Beetlejuice? If you favorite had to pick, part? Yeah, if you had to pick a favorite, like, uh, Keaton moment or Beetlejuice moment in the movie. 
probably this like his main introduction to Winona Ryder. I think it was probably the best. <laughs> Trying to get her to say Beetlejuice three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, where he was uh, <laughs> yeah. going through charades to, yeah. to get her. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, I. This is a great pick, uh, Beetlejuice. It was, it was close, close tie for me between that and another movie. But my favorite part of that movie is the the favorite line is I'm feeling a little anxious, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, that was, that's good stuff. The the whole thing, that that's really one of my favorite movies. I've always wanted to be him for Halloween, actually. Beetlejuice. I can see I, you pulling that off. Really? Yeah, definitely. Oh, all right. Well, thanks for that vote of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, my favorite uh, scene from that is when he's waiting it's at the end where he's waiting to see the counselor and he's got that big long number and then he switches it uh, with the headhunter mm-hmm. and then his head gets shrunk so I thought that was pretty funny hey hey what are you doing <laughs> <There's all that. laughs> uh, I yeah. love this movie this is a great great movie and it's definitely one of his highlights of the eighties. Oh, just of his career. Really. I mean, everybody knows. Yeah. Everybody knows, uh, Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. So it's, it's definitely, um, one of my favorites, the whole movie itself, the cast, the rest of the cast is hysterical too. You know, uh, Winona Ryder and her very dark side, but, and then, uh, Oh, um, Oh, Alec Baldwin. (laughs) Awesome. In that movie. And then what was the uh, other lead actress? Gina, Gina Davis. Gina Davis. Davis. Yep. Um, funny, funny people and just awesome all the way around. And Michael Keaton, of course, stole the show on that movie. Uh, definitely a great pick. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, his portrayal there of Beetlejuice really kind of, you know, as you said, stole the show. So it almost drowned it out you know, the performances of the others. I mean, the others didn't do a bad job, but they just didn't, you know, own the, uh, uh, you know, each scene that they were in, like Michael Keaton did. Yeah. That was a Tim yeah. Burton, right? Tim yeah. Burton movie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember now. Yeah. He, uh, I think Tim Burton and, and Michael Keaton must have been on the same wavelength because, the way he pulled off Beetlejuice was exactly how it was just, it was just brilliant <laughs> and yeah, no. so funny. Who would have thought that like a, a poltergeist ghost movie would be that funny. Yeah. Th- actually, that's a really good point, Dave. That's most of those ghost movies are supposed to be creepy and, and freak you out. But this was hysterical. It was just funny the whole time. Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, I'm trying to think if, how that movie would have been different had they tried to be very serious with it. And they didn't let Michael Keaton have the comedic range that he had. You know, would it have been as endearing of a movie uh, if it was, you know, more of a serious tone? And I don't want to think about that, really. Because <laughs> that would take no, away from it, so. It really would. I think it's it's... It's awesome as it is, and it's just too funny. I can't believe I saw that they're doing a Beetlejuice. They're talking about doing a Beetlejuice too. Really? It's been announced. Yeah. There's no. I, I can't find any real information on it, but uh, it is under Michael Keaton's uh, list. So who knows? We'll see how that works out. Reprising the role, huh? All right. I don't know. It's only what. 30 years later, 28 years <laughs> later. <laughs> well, I, I, I think he's got the chops for it. Sure. Yeah. And with that much makeup, you know, you won't see his aging really. And I just wondered, and I just wonder if they could actually pull off a movie like that nowadays. Yeah. It'd be interesting. <laughs> I think it's gotta be, you know, with the right script and the right director. I think it'll be all right. Yeah, it's uh, well, I guess we'll worry about that as that gets closer along. 
Uh, Scott, yeah. what are you thinking for a favorite 80s moment with Michael Keaton? Well, it was a close – it was very close between Beetlejuice and Mr. Mom. I and mean, Mr. Mom is just a classic, you know, the whole – how he he replaces the mom thing and he can't he just can't get a grasp on it it takes a long time for him to really get around being at home and his wife being the breadwinner and so many of the little funny um i guess situation comedy things that they threw into that movie um 38 39 whatever it takes what you know 220 221 whatever it takes it's just that uh, his his whole attitude throughout that movie was just hysterical. I I love him in that, and I think it's interesting how he went from such a comedic amp actor. And there's a lot of actors that are like that. You could take Tom Hanks too, uh, that started as comedic act- actors and then became more of a serious actor and played more serious dramatic roles. And I really really wish that. Michael Keaton would get back to his funny ways because he was just too funny. His his uh, delivery and his timing is just really good stuff. So that's uh, that that's one of my favorite things is Mr. Mom for sure. I have it on my iPod as a go to to just kind of watch on an airplane or whatever I have to do. So I. So that's your uh, – is it one of those burning house movies where if the house is burning, you're going to stop and watch it? <laughs> I don't know if it's one of those moments. Okay. I think I might stop and watch Beetlejuice before I watch Mr. Mom in the burning house uh, scenario. Okay. It's it's still one of my favorites. I've watched it quite a few times. You know, if it's on my iPod, I only have – you know, I only have like a you – know, 16 gig or 32 gig iPod. I can only hold so many movies. I have maybe six or seven movies along with my thousands of songs. But <laughs> so I, I have Braveheart, uh, Mr. Mom, uh, Vegas Vacation. I know. Don't don't hate me. <laughs> and a couple others. So it, it's pretty high up on my list as as just uh, a good go-to movie just to watch a few scenes for 20 minutes or half an hour or for a plane ride so yeah well for listeners if you heard that a few others what scott neglected to mention is he's got the star wars holiday special on his iphone (laughs) i don't have that on i wish i did though (laughs) i might have watched that a few times or either that, or um, that he, he he was trying to avoid that, so he did get even more embarrassed about watching or liking that thing. So, um, what was that? Uh, no, that was the other one. The one. Um, oh, we were just talking about this with Rosemary the other day. Something about rock aliens. What was it called? Oh, I forgot what you were talking it about. Was but it, was, uh, it had Pia Pia Zadora, and it's like the. Worst movie ever made, I swear. <laughs> it's oh. worse than the holiday special. But I love it. I can't help myself. I love bad stuff like that. So. Well, I, I know Matt's got a affection for Mac and Me. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> it was the Mac and Me. Yeah. Oh. So so we're way off, way, way, way yeah, off base here. But uh, Mr. Mom, what do you think, hey, Matt? You brought up Star Wars. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right Matt, what I, do you I think, like mr mom I, I i enjoy mr mom every once in a while it'll be on cable and you just end up starting to watch it uh i think the it does have a little sitcom s storylines to it it's a great scene with him at the office party trying to compete with terry gar's boss I think Martin it's Mull. Dabney Coleman? No, Martin Mull. Martin Mull. Yeah. yeah. He's such a sleazebag in that movie. He's good <laughs> at playing that role, though. Yeah. And I just think that was that's hilarious. And then him <laughs> trying to get all the repairmen. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, it's all the timing crazy. of every, all the cars pull in yeah. at the same time, and then they all they do their stuff and take off. The uh, What was the scene where he was changing the baby's diaper? Like, well, the, like, uh, they, they seemed had, like it was they, like they, the first time that he'd ever changed a diaper for one. Well, they, <laughs> they, they had a can of chili that the baby had gotten 
Oh. And uh, so the you know the baby was eating the chili out of the can, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden she goes, "Are you serious? You gave chili to a baby?" And then that's when they all just ran out of the house like quickly. And next thing you know, you have him there like in kind of the whole, you know, with pins on his nose and yeah, you know, hey, do the you know where mom? Yeah, yeah well, you know where mom keeps the extra diapers? <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me though, the favorite, uh, two favorite scenes. I like the scene where he's in the store and like the kids keep grabbing stuff and like, you know, uh, making accidents. And then all of a sudden it's like, Harv, clean up aisle four, you know? And then like at the end of it, you know, he's like, someone yells on the intercom, Harv, clean up an aisle eight. And he goes, look, Harv, I was never in aisle eight. Yeah. The store scene is really a good scene. Yeah. Uh, like when he goes to the, the, the deli counter and he or asks for cheese. I need a right. you know half a pound of cheese. And the lady behind the counter rattles off like 15 different kind of cheeses. <laughs> and, uh, oh, and then he has to buy the, um, feminine products. Yep. Yes. The yeah. feminine products. And he, yeah. he's all shy about it. And then they, they, they can't get a, they can't get a price on it. I need a price check. <laughs> no, no, she's kidding. She's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good pick. Um, and, and the other scene that I like in that is when they're doing the uh, the poker night, and then they're using the uh, coupons. Not a bad <laughs> idea, actually. Yeah, they're worth money. <laughs> you know, and you're not really losing any money. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so for my pick, I wanted to go Johnny Dangerously, and the reason why I want to go Johnny Dangerously is because. T- on Twitter. Wait, I, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Man, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish. Uh, uh, Griffin Dunn just started following us on Twitter. And he's Tommy Kelly in Johnny Dangerously. Yes. So I wanted to say Johnny Dangerously as my number one pick, but I can't because I got to go Batman. Okay. Is that where you going to yell at me no, for that? I was going to yell at you there for that because I know that that is one of your all time favorite movies. It is. And, and especially as Michael Keaton uh, playing that role. Yes. And that's why I said I wanted to go Johnny Dangerously. So that was kind of a, you know, because I, I got some, you know, newfound love with it as I started to reminisce about the movie, you know, now that I've got that connection, uh, you know, with Griffin Dunn. Not like, you know, other than, you know, a few retweets and a few likes on Twitter, it's not like we're best buds or anything. But anyway, it's still cool nonetheless. <laughs> I think we're still going to have to talk about Johnny Dangerously. Okay. All right. Well, then moving on to Batman then. Uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, the summer of 1989, you know, couldn't go anywhere without seeing the Bat logo. And I just remember that the moment that I heard Michael Keaton's going to be playing Batman. I thought, what are are they serious? Really? I mean, Mr. Mom, they're going to have Mr. Mom playing Batman. No way. There's no way this is going to be good. Um, the logo was everywhere. They put that on, you know, they were advertising all over the place and he turned out being so good in that role, uh, being able to play a very convincing Batman I'm still on the fence of him as a very convincing Bruce Wayne, but I think he's better than most. Um, but I really loved the summer of 1989 was just the summer of Batman for me uh, because I got to go to the San Diego Comic-Con. I got to, I read the Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller. So, you know, that all led up into that. And Michael Keaton just happened to be, you know, at the pinnacle of that moment with, you know, his presence in that movie. So that for me, that's what it was. You know, I, I guess, you know, just to be able to pick a specific scene is so tough. One of the favorite moments is the first time you get to see him as Batman on the rooftop. And after he stopped those bad guys, and then he says, I want you to tell all your friends about me. And he goes, who are you? And he goes, I'm Batman. Just loved it. Just absolutely loved it, and that was just perfect for me. So, what do you guys think, Batman? Matt, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've had a love-hate relationship with that movie for years. All right, we're I was going to talk about the Batman. love part. So, <laughs> <laughs> don't be a hater. I was a huge. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> <They'll be here. laughs> How dare you dislike that movie? No. All right. I don't know. Matt just got disconnected here. I don't understand what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost Matt. <laughs> Go but, ahead, Matt. Sorry. You know, um, but I was a huge Batman fan. And I during the 80s, I just devoured everything with Batman. I read the comic books religiously, read everything with Batman. And so I was super excited for the movie. And Michael Keaton does nail Batman. But most of the movie is just uneven to me. <laughs> but looking back on it now, it's like still my favorite Batman movie. Yeah. Like they still haven't gotten it right. <laughs> And I love Christopher Nolan's Batman movies, but to me, the movie that incorporates like the one that I grew up with is still Keaton, even though I disagree with the ending. I don't like Batman killing at the end, but it is what it is. Yeah, I, I think it is a tough role to fill because you've got to get somebody that's believable as both a Bruce Wayne and a Batman. And I think, yeah. I think that's the difficult part that they just can't seem to get right. I guess, unless you're just, um, why did I just draw a blank? I was thinking of the, uh, the voice actor that's been doing it for the cartoons. Oh, Kevin, Kevin Conroy. Conroy. Yeah. Unless you're Kevin Conroy, then you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just amazing. Like everybody makes, Batman's so depressing. <laughs> yeah. The way I grew up, it wasn't that depressing. <laughs> and then Frank Miller came along and just made him crazy, and I was kind of mad about that. And everybody had to copy Frank Miller. I really enjoyed The Dark Knight Returns. You didn't like that? Oh, I enjoyed it too, but it's just... No, growing up on the Batman comics that I read, it, they're almost contradicting each other. Oh, okay. Like, I'm talking about, the like, the... Batman from the 80s, if you read the comics from the 80s. But after Frank Miller came out, like everybody had to copy Frank Miller. Oh, okay. I gotcha. So the tone changed because of Miller. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. All right. Uh, but once again, we digress. Um, yeah. Scott, what do you think? Batman. My wife was a gigantic fan of this movie. I I liked it. But it didn't grab my attention the way it it like grabbed yours, Dave. And and Chrissy is just she's a fanatic about the the Michael Keaton Batman, the original one. Uh, you know, we've got old pictures of her with the Batman logo on her t shirt with the neon pink. You know, it's the black t shirt with the neon pink logo or neon yellow logo. Uh, I think it was pink. But she was all about it. And I didn't know her at the time, but uh, I didn't I didn't get into it as much. So I didn't and I didn't follow the comic book series. I remember watching Batman, the TV series with Adam West as a kid growing up, you know, the reruns, of course, because that was was like in the 60s, but um, in the reruns. And so it was hard for me to make that transition, I think to uh, the newer version of Batman, which was much darker than the Batman series that was on TV. But I did like it, and I think they picked a great nemesis uh, as the Joker with Jack Nicholson. I think he did a great job there. And, you know, I think Michael Keaton did make a nice transition from the comedic player that he had been playing for so long to a more serious role. And I, I would have to go back and look at the different Batmans that have been out there, and I would, I, I would think that Michael Keaton probably pulled it off the best, because he was not as, not as over the top as some of the other ones, like, um, uh, what's the latest guy's name that did Batman? Oh, not Batman ben versus. Affleck. No, 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 not Ben, not Batman versus Superman. It was uh, they did the whole Dark Knight series. Oh, uh, Christian Bale. Thank yeah. you, Christian Bale. And Saturday Night Live made a lot of fun of how his voice changed so dramatically between his Bruce Wayne character and his Batman character. And I don't know. I <laughs> I think Michael Keaton pulled it off the best with a, a mild transition between the two people. So Right. 
that that's where I that's where I stand on Batman. So so you're kind of a fan, is what I heard. Yeah, yeah, you know, I liked it, but it wasn't something that really struck me as one of the better movies or better works of Michael Keaton. Well, we just lost Scott. I don't know what happened. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Come on, we've no, had this conversation uh, before, Dave. No, talks. I know, I know, I know. I, I opened it up for that conversation again. But, um, but you know, no, I, 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 I get what you're saying because, you know, the pop culture of Batman, what was given was the Adam West 1966 Batman. And you had, you know, Batman and the Super Friends cartoon. Uh, so that was kind of what was, you know, out there as, you know, this version of what Batman was. The, comic, the people that read the comic books knew differently. And for me, 1989 is when I really got exposed to that other element of what Batman was supposed to be like. So that's the reason why it's so – it sticks with me because it – really just kind of gave me that real perspective as to what Batman was supposed to be like and not the campy Batman. And I enjoyed that a lot more than Adam West. Sorry. Um, so, but yeah, that's, that's my take on, you know, why, why it's so iconic for me and why it resonates with me through all these years. You know, there's only one scene in the movie that just totally ticks me off. <laughs> Oh, really? It's that scene with, with Alfred. He just brings down Vicky Vale for no apparent reason. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, here. Hey, he's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> what the f***, Alfred? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just like, dude, come on, man. A little bit of but like... I, honestly, I think Michael... <laughs> and Kim Basinger, you know. Schwing! Yes. <laughs> she was a great Vicky Vale. What about Night Shift? You guys a fan of that movie? Love Night Shift. I thought it was uh, a great kind of a breakthrough for him. I, I he was just so he was so goofy and so full of uh, comedic energy. He was just uh, all about the energy. And Henry Winkler was the uh, the anti fonts Yeah, like the. <laughs> <laughs> the anti font. Nice. He was the anti font. That is good. That's good. He's the uh, no. What's the uh, Superman? Clark Kent. No. What's the opposite of Superman? The um... oh god. I'm trying to figure out who you're talking about. Jimmy Olsen. I don't know. No, no. no he's the he's Superman's exact opposite. He's oh, like... Bizarro. Bizarro. Yes. It is like Bizarro. Yes. Yeah, definitely. It's bizarro, uh, Fonz. bizarro Fonzie. It's Henry <laughs> Winkler in Night Shift. <laughs> no, I liked that. I liked it. It was funny. Shelley Long was good in it. Um, you know, I, I... Hello, listener. This is Dave, and we had a technical glitch on the tail end of our 80s icon Michael Keaton episode. What happened was one of our co-hosts had lost their internet connection, and when we reconnected, we neglected to check to make sure that our recording was still going forward. So, what you missed was the three of us just being brilliantly awesome. Well, actually, I take that back. I was brilliantly awesome. Scott and Matt were just over the hump of being awesome. So, all three of us were awesome. I was brilliantly awesome. Uh, you guys, unfortunately get to miss that part of the conversation. Uh, we had a lot of fun uh, wrapping up the conversation uh, talking about Michael Keaton's movies. But one of the things that we always do at the tail end of our episodes that I wanted to make sure we had in there is the social media credentials for our co-hosts. So Matt is rocking the Twitter at MattMcLean73. Scott does his Twitter work on 80s Auto Reverse. And he also has one called Scott's Eye. I as in as in E Y E. Scott also takes care of 80s mixtape auto reverse on Facebook. So look him up that way. I'm Dave. I take care of our 80s reboot accounts uh, through all the social media uh, channels. That's 80sreboot.tumblr.com, Facebook.com slash 80s reboot, 
email is 80sreboot at gmail.com. We have a blog, and that is southgatemediagroup.com slash 80srebootblog. Uh, another way that I would really love for you to do is go out there and give us a rating review on iTunes. If you uh, go do that for us, uh, I would be very much appreciative. And then maybe we wouldn't be making these technical errors and you'd get to hear our whole, all of our episodes. Um, as a small token of apology to you, our listener, what I will be doing is editing in a few Michael Keaton audio clips from the 80s movies that we discussed. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. Sorry for the technical issue. Uh, we, uh, as you can tell, we are professional podcasters. Uh, and, you know, those guys never make mistakes, uh, much like us. Uh, thank you for reliving the 80s, and we will catch you later. After these messages, we'll be right back. You know what's really beautiful about this? You two kids picked me. You didn't have to, but you picked me. It makes me want to kiss you guys. Come on. Come no. Give me one. Ah, you're hard. Huh? All right. Let's get down to the You're right. I got a card around here somewhere. Here. Here. Who do I have to kill? Here, hold that for me, would you? There. Whoa. Oh, there, you wow. there you go. You don't have to kill anybody. Ah, possession. Good. Learn to throw your voice. Fool your friends. Fun and party. <gasps> No, we just want to get some people out of our house. Ah, I understand, I understand. Well, look, in order to do that, I'm really going to have to get to know you guys. You know, we got to get closer. Move in with you for a while. Get to be real pals, you know what I'm saying? And... <laughs> Save that guy uh, for later, huh? My wife and I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Sure, 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 sure. sure. Go ahead, shoot. Well, well, for instance, uh, what are your qualifications? Ah, well, I attended Juilliard. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague, and I had a pretty good time during that. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy. Now, what do you think? You think I'm qualified? Let me tell you about this guy I know, Jack. Mean kid, bad seed, hurt people. I like him already. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, the problem was he got sloppy, you know, crazy. He started to lose it. He had a head full of bad wiring, I guess. Couldn't keep it straight up here. He was the kind of guy who couldn't hear the train until it was two feet from him. Hmm. You know what happened to this guy, Jack? Mistakes. And then he had his lights out. Now you wanna get nuts? Come on! Let's get nuts. Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? I always ask that of all my prey. I just like the sound of it. <laughs> Another man's rhubarb. <laughs> hey, I know you. You're from Saturday Night Live. You're Joe Pitton. I'm Danny Berman. This chump was going to show you some previews for a new gangster movie called Johnny Dangerously. Check this out. Does this jerk look like a real gangster to you? He looks like Michael Keaton to me. I love Johnny T-shirts! I love Johnny! Believe it or not, everybody loves this guy. Broads love him. I'm not wearing a bra, Johnny. That makes two of us. Oh! You gotta watch your head left, Ma. His mother loves him. I love him, but someday I'm gonna knock him on his We should spend some time together. The DA loves him. See? Two weeks in Puerto Rico. You got fire. Verb. The new torch singer loves them. You got those. I like those almonds. Little babies love them. Oh, wait. The warden loves them. Johnny, it's an honor to have you on Gulf Road. Ah, don't be silly. <laughs> Pleasure's all mine. Yeah. Even the Pope loves them. Go yourself a new gym at the Vatican, eh? Huh? 
Well, this is one guy who ain't got no love for this phony. You shouldn't hang me on a hook. My father hung me on a hook once. Once. Well, Johnny's busted Mike Chops for the last time. Gee, he looked like a terrific guy to me. <laughs> Oops. Michael Keaton, Joe Piscopo, Danny DeVito, Dom DeLuise, Ray Luhan, Peter Boyle, Green Stapler, Griffin Dunn, Dennis O'Connor, Richard Dimitri, Alan Ray Walston. See Johnny Dangerously at a selected theater near you. I knew somebody who went to a selected theater once. Once. Title song by Weird Al Yankovic. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s.